we must move slightly sideways to Schoenberg, who was always searching for new modes of language. Schoenberg was an amateur painter, but a very good amateur painter. And a lot of his images have all the claustrophobic power of his best music. But of course, paints on canvas can slide into each other in a way that orchestral colours can't always. And maybe he was looking for the type of ideal instrument that would be able to provide him with these colours. In the third movement of his five orchestral pieces, he was trying in some ways to prove a point, that it would be possible to absolutely mirror the technique of painting in music, and that one could have a single chord which would develop not by changing its note, but by changing its orchestration, so that one somehow pulsed in and out of the sound. He wants to paint the picture of a still day on a lake. And orchestrally, he's giving us a picture of the water and the type of eerie stillness. Occasional fish dart to the surface, but the most important thing is the pulsing. And it has a type of hypnotic quality of no other music, as though for once Schoenberg, that most hyperactive of all intellects, had found really a still center. The year is 1945. We're in Messiaen's composition class in Paris, and this is the first notation for piano by his 21-year-old student, Pierre Boulez.
Boulez has spent a large part of his life repolishing, changing, adapting pieces. And in a way, his most touching tribute to his younger self is what he's done with four of these 12 piano notations. When he wrote these piano pieces, he was not only under the sway of Messiaen, his teacher, but had realised that the music of the Austrian composer Anton Webern, with all its simplicity, economy and crystalline perfection, was going to be the way forward for him. And what he's done more than 40 years later is to not only expand the piece, but expand its possibilities. The orchestral version is the work of a man who has changed, who has become much more mellow, much more humorous, and much more all-inclusive of the world. The great teacher, Nadia Boulanger, said the first thing she noticed about Boulez when she met him, and which was very scary, was the fact that if you played the note G, he would not only hear the note G, but he would hear the whole harmonic series around it. He would hear all the possibilities of the note. If you hear the first two bars in the piano notation, you can hear not only what he's done with the orchestra to these bars, but how he's expanded it backwards, as though it didn't start with this note, but it started with another note in the harmonic series, which is this. So the piece is stretched and expanded in every direction. Boulez has written for not only a gigantic orchestra, it's an orchestra which is well over a hundred soloists. Every single string player has his own part. When asked recently by a string player, why do we have all these parts where surely they can't all be heard. We've rehearsed them for hours, we've practiced them for days. Why have you written them if they can't be heard? And Boulez answered, it's not that. It's just that if you see a tree, you don't see each individual leaf, but you can certainly see if the leaves aren't there. And I need all of you playing. I need all of the leaves. It's a magnificent playground of sonorities charming, alive, and for me, a kind of scurrying of thousands of small animals. Now, if it is Boulez's 
immensely sensitive ear which strikes one. It is Messian's sense of colour that is most important in all of his music. Messian is an absolutely central figure for the 20th century, not only because he's a great composer, but also because he was a great teacher and spreader of the word. A man of such generosity that when his young pupil, Pierre Boulez, called his Tarangalila Symphony brothel music, he was still willing to teach him. Maybe he felt complimented. He had the gift of synesthesia, which means that when he heard chords, he would also see colours. Andre Previn tells a wonderful story about the confusion of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra brass section when rehearsing Tarangalila Symphony. Asking Messiaen if he wanted it played any differently, he simply said, yes, would you play it a little more greeny orange? La première fois que je suis venu à la Sainte-Chapelle, j'étais un tout petit garçon, je devais avoir 11 ans, et ça a été pour moi un émerveillement de couleurs, et je crois que c'est à ce moment-là que j'ai compris que la musique était colorée. Quand vous voyez un vitrail, vous ne voyez pas tout de suite tous les personnages. Vous avez une sensation colorée et vous êtes ébloui, vous êtes obligé de fermer les yeux. Mais la chose merveilleuse, c'est que les personnages que vous voyez ont des rouges, des verts, des jaunes, toutes sortes de couleurs. Lorsque j'entends un accord, un complexe de son, je vois, pas par les yeux, mais intérieurement, dans ma tête, des couleurs correspondantes. Je vais vous jouer maintenant en accord parallèle, et ça va donner un, un bleu-violet, avec des petits cubes gris, euh, du, un peu de bleu de cobalt, un peu de bleu de prusse, euh, quelques reflets euh, violacés, or, rouge et rubis, et quelques étoiles mauves, noires et blanches. Mais la dominante, c'est le bleu violet. Le voilà. His lifelong search for material, one of the most constant points of return for him was birdsong. He took birdsong and made it a structural part of his pieces. Now birds to him are not only sheer sounds of nature, they are sound 